Less than two weeks ago, the Supreme Court destroyed the lives of millions of Americans. People will die, and that's because I do not respect women. And I am a national disgrace. Is it any surprise that left-wing feminists fueled with pent-up anger and revenge want to blow me up and take me down? What goes around comes around. I am an optimistic guy, but today I have to say that I fear for my life. Oh, hello. Welcome to System Fail. I am your host. Excuse me. I am your host, DDoS. And we begin this week with a recap of May Day celebrations from around the world. This year, millions of people marked International Workers' Day by rallying, marching, chanting revolutionary slogans, and in some cases, throwing down. In so-called Montreal, around 500 people took the streets under the slogan, colonial and ecocidal, capitalism is war. This sounds better in French. Demonstrators clashed with police and smashed up a number of buildings, including offices of Google, the Palais des Congrès, and several banks. In so-called Santiago de Chile, as major trade unions marched with the new communist labor minister, Anarchists demanding the release of the country's political prisoners set up flaming barricades and battled the carabineros, who showed up to attack them with tear gas and water cannons. During the course of the rioting, street vendors opened fire on demonstrators, and three people were shot. In Istanbul, authorities once again cracked down on protesters, attempting to reach Taksim Square, arresting more than 200. Taksim Square has a special significance for revolutionaries in Turkey, as it was the site of a massacre on May Day, 1977. Ever since, May Day celebrations in the square have been heavily criminalized, and this year was no exception. In Berlin, things kicked off early. On April 30th, squatters took over a vacant hostel, and militant feminists held a large Take Back the Night march. On May Day itself, a 14,000 strong demonstration featuring a large black bloc clashed with a detachment of 6,000 police, pelting them with fireworks and bottles. And finally, in Paris, black clad anarchists fought running street battles with police who responded with tear gas, flashbang grenades, and dozens of violent arrests. Demonstrators burned barricades, and even attacked the firefighters sent in to extinguish them. Banks and real estate agencies were targeted, along with the McDonald's, which, despite having impressively strong windows, was eventually smashed up and ransacked. What do they call a Big Mac? They call it Le Big Mac. Le Big Mac. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the so-called United States, Anger has been steadily mounting in the wake of the May 2nd leak of the U.S. Supreme Court's plan to overturn Roe v. Wade. This long-feared scenario means that abortion will soon be recriminalized for millions of people, based entirely on the whims of two accused rapists and a handful of religious fundamentalists from the Opus Dei. This is definitely not a cult. This decision marks the culmination of years of legislation restriction abortion rights and limiting access to people living in rural communities, particularly in the South. While many of us are kind of frightened and scared about what's happening right now, I think that it's important to name that some of us have been always, already living these 
post row realities, folks. We are black people. We are disabled people. We are undocumented people. Democratic strategists have responded to the leak with barely restrained glee, calculating that the sudden loss of millions of people's bodily autonomy could deliver a much needed boost in the 2022 midterm elections. For Democratic candidates in November, are you prepared to fight for abortion rights? I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. Others have already started taking matters into their own hands. The past two weeks have seen attacks on so-called pro-life organizations, including an arson in Madison, Wisconsin on May 8th. Predictably, news of this attack provoked a number of defeatist conspiracy theories that claimed, without evidence, that the attack was a false flag operation. Anarchists bring the shower. How in the fuck would they be writing in cursive? This confusion was dispelled on May 10th, however, when the action was claimed by a group calling itself Jane's Revenge. In a searing communique, the authors wrote the attack was just a warning and gave anti-abortion organizations 30 days to disband or face a series of escalating attacks. Meanwhile, in Greece, the government of Kyriakos Mitsotakis is pushing ahead with the implementation of Law 4777, a package of neoliberal reforms aimed at restructuring Greece's education system to meet standards imposed by the European Union. <laughs> the most contentious aspect of Law 4777 is its call for the deployment of police inside the country's universities. This would represent an effective end to the practice of student asylum, a popular legacy of the 1973 Athens Polytechnic Uprising that brought down the country's military junta. This attack on the student asylum system is also widely seen as a preemptive measure aimed at weakening the broader Greek anarchist movement. Up to now, there have been recorded more than seven evacuations of squads and political spaces and more than 180 arrests. Comrades in Greece have long viewed the deployment of police to the universities as a red line and have vowed to block their deployment by any means necessary. The first detachment of the new university police force is set to complete their training on May 17th. Police work is what you are. And finally, on May 9th, protests in Sri Lanka exploded into a full-blown insurrection. Chaos in Sri Lanka as the government is upended. An explosion of anger after weeks of anti-government protests. The situation is getting out of hand. The country is in a state of anarchy. Following weeks of sustained popular pressure, the country's corrupt prime minister, Mahinda Rajapaska, was forced to step down. <laughs> These protesters have just found out. Following his resignation, a crowd of his supporters violently attacked a protest camp located outside the presidential residence. The response from demonstrators was swift and intense. An MP was swarmed and beaten by an angry mob. Another politician fired on a crowd of protesters, shooting two before turning the gun on himself. Rioters torched buses and burned down multiple houses belonging to politicians, including two of the president's private residences. They also smashed up and torched his presidential Lamborghini. The revolt in Sri Lanka may well signal the opening salvo of a fresh wave of global uprisings, triggered by a growing debt crisis and massive spikes in the price of food, fuel, and fertilizer caused by the war in Ukraine and the escalating effects of climate change. Dozens of countries are currently teetering on the edge, and global elites are getting increasingly nervous. Reserve your family spot in a state-of-the-art underground vault today. Sign up now and prepare for the future. We've now reached the end of this episode of System Fail. For more information on student struggles in Greece, check out System Fail number nine, The Ghosts of Democracy. Or check out our extended interview with Tasso Sagris, featured on episode seven of our Circle A podcast, entitled War on Anarchists. You can find both on our website. To support Submedia, 
consider making a one-time donation or signing up to be a monthly sustainer at sub.media slash donate. You can also support us by buying some of our merchandise at sub.media slash gear. Be sure and follow us on your corporate data mining platform of choice. Just search for Submedia, or better yet, sign up to our mailing list and get every new episode delivered directly to your inbox. Godspeed, humans.